Hello and welcome to GP Notebook TV. My name is Anish Katech and I'm a GP in South Wales. Today I thought I'd discuss with you um, the relatively recent uh, guidance that came out from the special, Specialist Pharmacy Service uh, in January 22, talking about the use of antihistamines in women who are breastfeeding. So, uh, as usual, I'm going to give you some uh, bullet points and take home messages that I feel are important for us in primary care. So, as a bit of background, we all use antihistamines for a wide variety of conditions and we know that they're very useful medications. And what the, the SPS have done here is given us some guidance because we know there are very limited studies on their use in women who are breastfeeding and long-term data is unfortunately lacking. And this will just give us a little bit of confidence about using them in women who are breastfeeding. Of note, this guidance applies to infants that are healthy and full term. Now of the non-sedating antihistamines, cetirizine and loratadine are probably the ones of choice. And cetirizine has been used extensively um, with no major uh, adverse effects reported. Now, loratadine can also be used, and there have been some small reports of minor sedation in the infant and also some slight reduction in milk production, but no other adverse effects noted. If they can't be used and they're not suitable, then des loratadine, levocetirazine, and fexofenadine can be used also. And although there might be some small amounts in, in the milk, um, these are unlikely to be clinically relevant and cause major side effects. Also, um, acrivastine can be used um, if the others are not suitable, uh, but it does. It can be found in the milk, and um, because of its potential side effect of causing some drowsiness, the patient would need to be and the, and the infant would need to be closely monitored. So this is this is not ideal, but it can be used if it needs to be. We all know we've also got the sedating antihistamines in here. Chlorphenamine is the one of choice. Again, this has got, um, people have extensive uh, experience of use with uh, very little uh, adverse effects uh, reported. In general, with the sedating antihistamines, we all need to be aware that they can obviously cause um, some side effects and the patient and the infant would need to be uh, closely monitored uh, in this case for any symptoms of drowsiness, irritability, uh, dry mouth or changes in feeding. We always would use, I'm sure, the lowest dose for the shortest amount, uh, amount of time possible. If um, chlorphenamine isn't suitable, then hydroxazine or promethazine are also uh, options that we do have if we need to go uh, down, down that route. Um, now, Interestingly, there are some conflicting uh, pieces of evidence and data talking about uh, antihistamine use in, in women who are breastfeeding and any reduction in milk production. And the two that have been mentioned here are loratadine and promethazine. Um, but we must um, note here that these are uh, small studies and, and, and based on patient reports. Certainly, um, the, the evidence is that uh, antihistamines are unlikely to affect breast milk production, especially when lactation is more established. And we're talking really about six to eight weeks postpartum in, in this case. So in summary here, um, antihistamines can be used uh, in women who are breastfeeding with some caution. And as usual, we would use the, the lowest dose for the shortest amount of time possible and really informing the women um, of, of their use in breastfeeding and coming to that shared decision making. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you found this video useful. Uh, please do continue to tune in to GP Notebook TV for further videos. Thank you.